Hey team, today we are doing a form review for one of my new students in the Rogue Archery Masterclass. Now, we often do these form reviews and the reason is because whilst we have this detailed curriculum kind of going through the shop process and breaking it down, there's no real substitute for that individual feedback. And I wanna thank Wilson for allowing me to share this because in today's form review, we actually cover quite a lot of ground and we cover a few elements that come up again and again with students and are pretty foundational to mastering archery technique. So I wanna thank Wilson for allowing me to share it because I think there's a lot of value that you can gain from this video and it's gonna help a lot of other people as well. Let's dive in and let me know in the comments below this video what you learned from this form review, being a fly on the wall in our technique review sessions. And also let me know, does any of this apply to your shooting? G'day Wilson, how are you buddy? Thank you for sending through your videos for your form review. So we've got some good news. First of all, you're doing a lot of stuff really, really well. There's a couple of things in here structurally that I think you can help with this, which are gonna be quick wins and are gonna translate really, really well into your shop process. So let's dive in. Now, I'm just gonna play this through for your benefit so that you can we can start from the same place and we can watch a few of your shots from some different angles here. The first thing I wanna point out is a couple of things you're doing really well. I know you are pretty new to the Rogue Archery Masterclass, so there's been a lot of learning and incorporation of your shot process. And what it looks like to me, first of all, it looks like you've kind of pieced together the steps in the shot process relatively well. The other thing that you seem to have above average that you're doing really well at is your self-awareness. So when you sent me these videos, you actually sent through some quite detailed comments, also breaking down the things that you've been working on and the things that you're aware that you need to continue to work on. Uh, we're going to address some of that today, but really where I think I can add value is instead of just telling you what you already know, I think I can help you direct it. Because whilst you've got some good awareness of what the things you need to work on, um, I think that, yeah, there's too much. We need to break it down into some sort of prior priorities, um, focus on things in a progressive sequence so that you can incorporate it. And I can also recommend how to incorporate that within your, you know, your training drills and things like that. Let's dive in. First of all, there's a couple of, of basic things here we can look at. As you know, when we, anytime we're addressing the shop process, it's very important that we actually address things in sequence. So um, anytime I'm breaking down form, we first look at technique structure and then we look at shot execution because one links onto the other. If you have issues in your technique structure, so your posture, your alignment, your setup position, your head position or whatever, then that always translates into shot execution. And what you can do as a coach, you can actually look early in the shot process at the earliest possible stage where issues arise from and if you address them at the root cause, often what you'll find is further issues just kind of resolve themselves. And it's amazing how easily you can kind of fix form issues using that very simple uh, philosophy. What we're gonna do is look at, first of all, uh, one of the first steps in the shot process. So stance are looking good. Um, posture, um, you, you do have this chest down position, um, but I wanna look at the setup position. From this setup position, obviously the setup position is where we set uh, the hook onto the string, the bow hand into the grip, the pressure point into the grip, and we apply a little bit of tension just to kind of set it all in place. We also look at the target and set our head position. Um, so you, you're kind of doing all that, but there's a couple of things that you can tweak here. First things first, I'm gonna actually compare this to myself let's just get a little get a little comparison going here what I want to point out is in this setup position from here okay I want to point out the angle of your bow arm okay so if we look at how high you have to raise your arm if we just measure to approximately horizontal, just to give us a frame of reference. And if we look at 
how mine's looking here. It might not seem like a lot, but what we're noticing is you've actually got a longer way to raise the bow, don't you? Can you see this? Okay, so from this position, um, your bow is actually a lot lower. Now, why is this? This is a very quick win, mate. This is something that you can incorporate without much uh, change. And all I want you to do is when you're going to the setup position, I want you to balance this bottom limb against your thigh, as you can see that I'm doing here. And what this means is that the mass weight of the bow isn't just hanging off your front shoulder here. It's actually kind of resting against your thigh and it's gonna be a much more efficient to raise the bow from this position. As you then go and raise the bow, it's gonna be a lot more efficient. Now, the reason why this is so important is when you're, um, this is one of the things that doesn't, that can pick up as a bad habit early on when you're working with a training bow that doesn't translate so well as you progress. So let me give you an example. With a training bow or when you're first learning technique on a, on a light bow, there's often very little mass weight on the bow. So this kind of starting position, you wouldn't really even notice that it's impacting your shot process, right? You're not gonna get tired, you're not gonna feel it because the bow is so light. However, as you progress and as you add V-bars onto the bow weight and as you increase your draw weight, you'll in proportion, you'll increase the ma mass weight of the bow generally in proportion to that, then it'll start to become more and more of an issue. And so, even if you're just raising that bow a little bit extra, what it does is it tends to strain the deltoids and, um, and the traps on that drawing side and over-engage those muscles. Whereas through our archery technique, what we wanna do is we wanna make everything as efficient as possible. If we can gain 1% efficiency, let's go for it. So in this instance, um, you might think that, okay, yeah, I can, I'm not feeling any issues, but as you progress and as your bow mass weight goes up, this will become increasingly important. It'll mean that um, when you start from a more efficient position, you're not gonna be as fatigued from raising the bow. Um, inefficiency means fatigue, fatigue means inconsistency. And it's also going to mean that, you know, if you're shooting, start to shoot up more, um, vo a higher volume of arrows, two, three, 400 arrows a day, then that efficiency um, translates into more inconsistency. So honestly, mate, this is an easy win. We're just going to bring that, we're just gonna bring that bow onto the thigh here from the setup position. And honestly, this is, this is not even really a form change, it's just a process change. So that is a quick one. Now, the next thing I wanna look at is kind of more posturally. So I'm gonna draw some lines on here just to give us a frame of reference for your posture and your head position. How's that look? Okay, so if we can agree that this is your starting position, um, good thing is you've given us some quality video footage of a tripod, which means that we can pick it apart. Some of my students will send me a, a handy cam from their mate who's also eating a banana at the same time, and it's very, very hard to analyze that footage. So this is good stuff because what it means is we can, we can see, you can see how we can analyze the shot process at a higher resolution. So let's have a look here. Okay, we've got a setup position. Raise, pre-draw. Okay, something's happened here, hasn't it? Let's look at this slowly. As you're raising the bow, there's like, and doing pre-draw, there's this postural shift. Okay. And there's also quite a lot of head movement. So this is something that we should address next. Like I said, we've got to address issues in form at the earliest possible stage within the shot process because otherwise this is gonna translate very, very poorly as you progress in your shot process. So let's look from a different angle, get rid of these. Okay, so here we have set up position, little hip tuck there, I did notice. So just, you know, at the start, you know, you have the normal lumbar curvature in the lumbar spine, and then you have a little chest down technique. So you flatten your lower back, that's good. You could potentially have a little bit more hip engagement, rotating the hips in this direction a touch more, just to engage a little bit more stability through the hips. 
But in terms of um, chest down technique, that's looking not too bad. But, okay, we see a couple of other things happening here. If I just draw some vertical lines, we can see through the shot process quite a lot of postural shift, can't we? Even almost like swaying um, as you go through your shot process. So it's not that you're, you know, I've seen much, much worse in terms of arching the back. You know, your chest down technique is not too bad. Like I said, maybe a little bit more hips tucked in, hip engagement to gain more stability, but it's more your sense of balance. You know, your sense of weight distribution seems to be a little bit off. So, um, and from the first angle, we also saw that there was kind of this postural shift and head movement in the lateral plane, right? Okay, the other thing I'm seeing as you come into pre-draw position is, um, is a rotation of the hips. So it's pretty subtle, but as you know in the pre-draw position, what we're looking for is through a rotation of the raccoor, through thoracic rotation, we're looking to draw the bow into that full draw position. And it doesn't look like much from this angle, but um, I've got some other examples here. Let's look at the destroyer herself, Kong Chae Yong. Okay, and what we can see is that throughout the shot process, she shoots with a square stance. So if we draw her line of stance on, you'll notice that the angle of the hips are parallel with the stance. However, in setup position, what we've just talked about, the shoulders are actually slightly open to the target, aren't they? Hmm, I wonder if this is important. So. Then what happens is as she raises and go into pre-draw position, now we'll get rid of these because there's a, a, can, a panning camera angle, but you'll notice that the hips and the stance are actually at the same angle and now the shoulders are aligned. Hmm. So it's that rotation through the core which is achieving pre-draw position, not a swinging of the hips. Okay, we can also look at this in various other arches, so it's not just one shooting style, we can look at uh, the man himself, Brady Ellison. And if we look, he shoots with an open stance, but we can see the same principle here. Open stance, okay, hips are on the same angle as a stance, and shoulders are also open in the setup position. From there, raise, and in the pre-draw position, you can see that he's now through rotation of the core, aligned his shoulders with the target, even though the hips and the stance are open. So in your case, um, what we need to do is we probably need to go back and revisit that because you, what we can see here is if we look very, very closely, I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see this because it's kind of subtle. You start with the square stance, which is absolutely fine. Uh, and your hips are square to the target. But then as you raise, 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 pre-draw, did you see that? So you are achieving shoulder alignment, which is great, but you're kind of achieving it with the wrong mechanics. I hate to break it to you. So uh, what's happening here is you are swinging the hips around rather than isolating that rotation through the core. So what I recommend, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we need to have a look at your posture. So we talked, we talked about this, your chest down technique is okay, maybe a little bit of tightening of the hips, but that's, that's not too bad at all. Um, your setup position, we're gonna tidy up a little bit, but then when we're seeing this head movement as you're ra raising and rotating into pre-draw, I think it's mostly because you don't actually have the correct mechanics of the pre-draw down just yet. So what I recommend is that you go back in the module, so module five in the masterclass is pre-draw module, is the pre-drill module. We cover in a lot of detail how to achieve shoulder alignment through thoracic rotation. And we also cover some drills in the posture module around how to learn how to stabilize the hips and introduce that thoracic rotation and use the rotation of the core throughout the shot process. So my recommendation here is going to be to review posture and pre-drill pre modules uh, because that is probably the primary area where you need to focus. Okay, 
next, there is one other angle that I wanted to draw down on. Okay, so I want to have a look here at your scapular positioning through the shot process. Now, as a coach, I tend to uh, focus much more heavily on scapular positioning than back tension. I think it has much more utility as a principle and as a coaching principle than the term back tension. And back tension is one of those things that's most commonly misunderstood by archers and coaches. So we're gonna focus on um, scapular positioning, but this and back tension are linked together. They're basically the same thing. So I have prepared a demonstration here of correct scapular positioning through the draw sequence. So if we look at this here, this is setup position. And you can see that the scapula is not at all retracted here, right? So if you think about the range of motion of the scapula, um, like the scapula could, could go from fully extended to fully retracted on the drawing side. Now in the setup position, um, it's not fully extended, right? It's kind of, but it's, it's not really retracted either. So what I would say is that if we were talking about our bicep as a uh, proxy here, that if this is 0% um, retracted and this is 100% retracted, the scapula would be maybe 20% retracted. When it's fully extended, this is actually the weakest position. This is where you put more strain on the muscle. Uh, it's weakest, it's least efficient. So um, what we have here is in the setup position, the scapula is about 20% retracted through its range of motion. Now, as we proceed, we raise and pre-draw. Okay, what's happened? Now, the scapula has retracted to maybe about 50% of its range of motion, right? Let's have a look at that again. Set up position, 20%, raise, pre-draw, 50%. Now, with a recurve bow, this is very important to understand because what happens as you draw a recurve bow back further and further and further? Well, the poundage increases, doesn't it? So it kind of makes sense that when we talk about um, muscular output in terms of uh, power threshold, when the muscle is fully extended, if we talk about the bicep, this is the weakest position. And as you contract, actually the, the recruitment of high threshold muscle fibers increases and power output increases. So fully contracted muscle is actually the highest in isometric strength. So what this means is as you're drawing back your bow, the position through the draw sequence where the weight of the bow is lowest is the weakest position. And then as you draw the bow back and it gets heavier, you're actually recruiting high threshold muscle fibers and creating more power output as the scapula retracts. Remember that. Okay, so now we have pre-draw position, 50% retracted. Next, we complete loading and anchor. Whoops, excuse me. Um, and in this position, the scapula is more like 80% retracted through its range of motion. This is a very powerful position. It's very important that in the full draw position, the scapula is not fully retracted. It's not 100% retracted to the end of its range of motion. If you do that, it means it has nowhere left to go, right? You have no expansion left. And this is often a problem when people use the term back tension because it's possible just to kind of squeeze the muscle, fully retract, over retract the drawing side scapula and you're feeling the muscle squeezing, but you have nowhere left to go. So it doesn't actually create any power or expansion. So in this position, we have uh, the scapula retracted about 80% through its range of motion. It's quite powerful. And um, also as the, the draw weight is high in this point, we have a lot of power and control of expansion through the clicker. And then what happens is expansion, release, follow through, and the scapula is now 100% retracted. So let's review this through the draw sequence. Set up position, 20%. Raise pre-draw, 50%. Loading anchor, 80%. Release, follow through, 100%. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope it does because it is important. Now, I've got another demonstration here of what you are doing. So let's have a look at this. I've just, just done this for a demonstration. You're also not the first person to do this and I've done some other examples in the, uh, of students in the course um, demonstrating this. 
is that, okay, raise, pre-draw, looking good. Let's start again. Scapular position, 20%, raise, pre-draw, 50%, loading, anchor. Ooh, what happened there? Okay, so what's happened is, and this is very, very common, is that um, it's all looking good, all looking sweet. You do retract the scapula as you're drawing around during the loading phase. And then why does the scapula lose positioning here? Well, it's related to the path that the elbow follows. Watch this. As the elbow raises into anchor position, it's very easy to lose the scapular position in this direction, okay? So in the correct one, I just wanna highlight this. The correct one is, yes, the scapula draws down and around during loading, but then as the elbow raises, see the elbow does come up to create a connection with the, the jawline and anchor there, but the scapula stays down, isn't it? All right, so we're going to examine this a lot closer. So, in your instance, I'm gonna uh, come back to this again and then we're gonna break it down in far more detail. Okay, pre-draw, loading, and then the scapula comes out. And generally what happens at this point in time is the, trench, the tension is lost uh, in these kind of the lower scapular retractors. And the articulation of the shoulder girdle is just incorrect. And generally here, the tension is transferred into upper traps. So um, this is a bit of a problem. And what this means is that through the release and follow through, you lose power. So let's look back to you again. Zoom right in on this sucker. Okay, so we're looking at scapular positioning throughout the draw sequence. Okay, setup position. Raise, pre-draw, pre maybe. Loading, and you can see that your scapula does retract, but then as you lift the elbow, what happens? I'm gonna turn these off for a second. For the untrained eye, you might miss this, but look, you, you retract the scapula, elbow comes up, and the scapula moves this direction, doesn't it? Okay, then as you release, the scapula actually finishes out in this position. So you're kind of transferring here into uh, shoulder extensors and upper traps rather than the correct recruitment of the scapular retractors. I know this looks like a little smiley face, so that's unintentional. Okay, so let's discuss elbow tracking. Now, obviously uh, a primary focus, the primary point of articulation during the loading step of the shot process is the retraction of the scapula. However, um, we also, the elbow must follow a very specific path through the loading step uh, in order to maintain the correct scapular engagement. It's, it's connected, you see. So the elbow is an extension of the, you know, it's connected to the shoulder girdle. So if you have incorrect articulation through the shoulder girdle and the scapular retraction, then it translates into the elbow. And so by focusing on elbow tracking through loading step, you'll see what I mean. So. Here I've got an example here and you can see what I've sketched on here is in the green line is the elbow, the, the path that the elbow follows throughout the loading step. So here's pre-draw position and as we go through loading, setting the drawing side scapula down and around, you have that downward movement of the um, elbow and then as you continue to retract the scapula, the elbow moves around in this direction but it also comes up into the anchor position and follows this kind of pathway. Now, what we'll find is that this kind of, it's very important that as the elbow retracts and as it kind of raises, as you find that anchor position, that it must retract at the same time. We find that often um, people who have incorrect scapular engagement, they tend to follow more of a pathway like this, okay? <laughs> Rather than this up and around, they kind of have up and then around intention. So this is incorrect. And so we can observe this in actually arches of many different styles. And so here we have Kang Chae Yong, and you can see that she has this beautiful 
loading, engagement of the drawing side scapula, elbow coming up and around to form a really solid connection with the anchor and jawline. We can also see this with Brady Ellison. So he again has this uh, through the loading and anchor phase. He has this retraction of the drawing side scapula and it comes up and around. It follow, follows this beautiful elbow tracking pathway as he comes in, finds a nice deep connection with his anchor position. So what I suspect is that um, if we look at your elbow path, is that it's not quite the best angle to see it here, but what I'm expecting is to see a bit more of a kind of a less fluid motion, less correct elbow tracking, and that we'll see the elbow kind of goes straight up and loses the retraction that of the, the shoulder extensors and the scapular retractors as you come into that anchor position. So if we have a look, yep, you do have scapular retraction. Oh, I've missed my mark on that one. My lines are all over the place. But you can see that as you're anchoring, you do have that kind of uh, straight up action here going on. Can you see you do have that happening? So you're not quite continuing the retraction of the drawing side scapula as you're raising the uh, elbow into the full draw position. And the other thing that can happen here is sometimes the elbow will be too high. So if the elbow is too high, then obviously at some point, I'll demonstrate, at some point, if the elbow comes too high, you lose the scapular positioning and the correct engagement of those scapular retractors. So if we, we can check your elbow height here quite easily. So this is full draw position. And if we draw an extension from your pressure point through your hook, your elbow is not, not too bad. It's a, maybe a touch on the high side, but this is completely acceptable. It's just that maybe you're not quite keeping that scapular, uh, the correct scapular retraction happening on. So there we have it, mate. We've covered a few things, haven't we? So if I refer back to my notes here, um, priority one for you should be setup position. Very, very easy fix. This is something that you can probably fix um, you know, five or 10 minutes and just rest, make things easy for yourself. Rest this lower limb on your thigh as a starting point and it's gonna translate much, much better rather than just taking all the load onto your your bow side shoulder. Um, you know, put it on, rest it on your thigh and it'll mean it's a little bit more efficient when raising the bow. Next, you need to revisit the posture and pre-draw modules to kind of address this uh, and, and give yourself the correct mechanics through drawing to pre-draw position using a rotation of the core um, and isolating rotation through the core and not swinging the hips. So that answers your question that you sent me around the correct pre-draw position. You kind of said that you're swinging rather than uh, a controlled action in the pre-draw, which is correct. So that's good self-awareness. Um, but I would say, yeah, go back. Posture and pre-draw modules will help you with that one. And then the final thing that you need to revisit is in the loading step, okay? And so we cover this in the loading module in detail around scapular positioning. And we also have in the course, we have that module on uh, scapular control drills. So I go through, I have three drills in there. You can use a TheraBand or if you go to the gym, then actually cable machines are fantastic for uh, training the correct recruitment of the scapular retractors. And what I would do is I would prioritize them in that order. So one, set up position. Two, posture and pre-draw is gonna be the next focus. While you're working on those things, the first one's a quick win. The second one's gonna take a little bit of work to keep that correct recruitment of the, the posture and pre-draw. And the, the third one, scapular retraction, is also gonna take a bit of work and may take a little bit of motor control training and strength training as well. So um, what I would do is I would, um, I feel like it's, it's very manageable for you to focus on those things uh, together. I would also, I'm also aware that you have recently introduced the clicker into your training. Um, now that's fine, except we have a few uh, structural issues to address in your technique before I think you're ready to start uh, shooting with the clicker. The reason I say this is that anytime we address something in your technique structure, this has an impact on your draw length, right? And so when you fix the clicker, you're fixing the draw length. 
And so you can end up kind of compensating for the clicker and introducing bad habits rather than just learning the correct shot mechanics. So your feedback to me was that uh, you were actually, you put on your clicker and your scores went down. All right. I'm actually not surprised because uh, I think in particular that scapular positioning means that you're not really engaged to expand properly and properly use the clicker. But I think if we can address setup, pre-draw and loading, mate, you're going to be on track and it's going to really increase your clicker control. When we put in that clicker, you'll be able to very easily learn how to master your expansion and timing uh, through that clicker expansion range. So let me know if you have any questions. Let's have a catch up and, and talk through it. But I hope this video review has been helpful and given you a bit of direction on what to work on next. So what do you think of this form review guys? We covered a lot of ground and I'm really hoping that you can take some value out of this, some little nuggets of wisdom and incorporate it into your shop process. Now, if you're looking for more, then there's actually some free preview modules that you can view from the Rogue Archery Masterclass uh, at archerymasterclass.com. I'll link it up down below. And yes, you can view some of those modules completely for free and get as much of it out as you can. I won't judge you. But if you do want to join our community and get involved in these form reviews and access the full coaching curriculum, um, then please go check it out and I hope to see you there. Peace.